I can can. Can you? Yes, I can can. Thank you. And so can you next on Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing grandpa's chicken. chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet. Gonna educate your palate right here in Farmer's Kitchen. In Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by. L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Harvest Energy Solutions. Harvest cabins when you absolutely have to get away. House warmings, meeting all of your outdoor living and fireplace needs. Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. Rose Farm Supply. Family farming and commitment to our customers since 1982. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life. Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. Chrisman Mill Vineyards, Good Foods Co-op, Kentucky Beer Cheese, Weisenberger Mill. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Today we're canning. And that's what we've been doing, yeah. I mean for real. And we're going to talk about different ways to can, different products that we've tried, things that we like, things that we don't like. Actually, there's not too much that we don't like here. But there are different methods. A lot of people are really scared of canning because... They don't know what to do. They think I, it's hard. And they think, they also are scared, they, the very word pressure cooker, oh. you know, they think a bomb's going to go off and we're all going to die. But let's, let's talk about our grandparents. Our grandparents all canned their stuff. Our great-grandparents, you know, and they're afraid their food's going to go bad. Let me give you a real quick tip. If on the occasion that you have a jar that goes bad, it will let you know. Yeah. Gases and bacteria build up in there. It will let you know. Your smeller is your best friend. If you have something to go bad, you open it up and it's going to kind of jump out on you. Right. So that doesn't happen very often at all. If you follow the procedures that are very cut and dry, very simple, and we're going to, believe it or not, we're going to do all these things tonight, plus we're going to visit Lois, and she's going to show us how to pickle some green beans. Bobby Joe grew some honking big green beans this year that absolutely taste wonderful, and he's going to show us how to cut those off and put them in a quart jar and make some fantastic pickled green beans. But first, let's talk about the basics, okay? When it comes to canning, some things you can get by with a hot bath or hot packing, some people call them. Generally, we do most of our tomatoes like this. That's my favorite way. That's your favorite way. way. And how long does it take? Depends on half hour, 45 minutes, some 10 minutes, not that long. It's not that long. We'll explain that process as we go along. If you are going to use your old-fashioned pressure cooker, there's a few things you have to remember here. There are things that are very vital before you get started. One of them is, this is your vent. you got to make sure your vent is not clogged. You can do that by holding it up to light or blowing through it. Make sure your seal which comes in here is not cracked or dried. That's your rubber seal that goes around the edge. And guess what? You're way ahead of the game. Now, do you remember if you've ever been around the old fashioned can of the jiggling sound? That's when you know your pressure cooker is working. That means there's pressure behind this. And a lot of people are so thrown off by the 10 pounds, the 15 pounds, so on and so forth. That has to do with elevation check your own area to see what your elevation is and make sure that you have a good canning book to help step you through this. Now, that is five pounds. That's 10. And most things we do here in Kentucky are 10 pounds for X amount of time. For instance, green beans go about a half an hour generally. Right. Now, we're also going to talk about this newfangled canner that I recently bought because I tried it out at a seminar and I liked it. Now, this doesn't hold as much 
It's not, say, an industrial canner. You can't do a whole lot of stuff. Right. You can't do green beans after green beans after green beans. But if you're the beginning canner, this is something you might want to consider. Now let's talk about cost. A pan? Ten, fifteen dollars. Ten bucks. Yeah. This is a Presto, and I think we got, what, 70 bucks right. in there maybe. Now if you move up to this, and this is a ball canner about, it's very costly. It's about $299, and you can find those cheaper sometimes. But if you have that kind of money and want to spend on this and do small batches, and a lot of people want to do small batches as, as things come along, such as strawberries. Strawberry jam is absolutely wonderful. We just made some the other day. you need your little jars for that. And the first thing that you have to do always is sterilize your jars. That's the first step before you do anything. You can boil those. With this canner, it actually has a process, a preheat process, where you set your jars in there and it sterilizes them for you. I like that. Less There's mess, a, isn't it? Less mess. Yeah. There's a lot of things about this that I like, and we'll show you that in a minute. Tonight, we're gonna make strawberry jam. We're gonna show you how to can green tomatoes. We're gonna make some zucchini sweet pickles. We're gonna touch base with Lois, and she's gonna pickle green beans, so it's all about canning tonight. All right, let's talk about our traditional pressure cooker. This is a Presto. Nikki's already put two quarts of water in here. We're gonna put one more. This is your rack to set your jars on. Go ahead and put that last quart in. We're gonna get this water boiling. That starts the process. So Nikki, if you'd like, grab a hold of that. The whole process is fairly simple. Obviously, we have to get this boiling. We're gonna set that aside, but let's talk about this little outfit right here. Now, this guy right here looks like R2-D2. It's absolutely foolproof. This is just a cool little machine. For those of you who are just beginning, it's just basically touch this, touch that, touch the other. Here's what's great about this. This comes out. Your water line is in there. It's foolproof. Your rack is in here. It's got a setting when you begin that sterilizes your jars. It's called preheat. You put your jars in there, you don't have to worry about, you know, boiling them nice. all There's a preset for everything on here. Now, another great thing about this particular canner, the thing I like almost the best about it, it has its own heat source. It's self-standing. So you could take it on the back porch, you could take it out wherever That's and nice. use it at, yeah. in that process. Plug it in. If you look on here, it's very simple. Preheat, jams and jellies, fruits, tomatoes, sauces, pickles, and sauces. So let's go ahead and fill this up to the watermark. Your watermark is just right here. Okay, now you simply take this over here and set it in here. Nick, if you'll get me some small jars. Okay. Now we know we're gonna do six jars in here. So we're gonna put those in there. We're gonna close the top, twist the top, and we're gonna hit preheat and start. All right, let's catch up. We got a lot going on here. Big show, a lot of information. Our jars over here are heating up, sterilizing. We've only got a few minutes left to go. Our water is now boiling back here. Make sure your vent is clear and seal. Once that steam is coming out and you have the vent coming up and you let that go in for 10 minutes, then you set, only then do you set your jiggler on top. Now, we're starting our zucchini pickle slices. And we need two and a half cups of zucchini, about two, two and a half cups of onion too. So we're just gonna go ahead and cut up whatever we like. We'll probably mm -hmm. go a little lighter on the onion. This is what you call the hot bath or hot pack. It's so simple. And the jars seal after that. So you cut those up, what, about a quarter of an inch? Yeah, whatever size you like. And we could even cut them in half if we want. It depends the size you want. Now, if you want to compare these to something, these are gonna be more like bread and butter, wouldn't you not right. imagine? All right, now where are we going from here? Well, you know, usually you could use a smaller zucchini bee, and this was a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go ahead and cut these down a little smaller so that they'll fit in our pint jars better. I'm actually gonna quarter them if you're okay with mm -hmm. that. And that'll be our little, it's almost like a bread and butter pickle, but made out of zucchini. So if you're trying to get rid of your zucchini, now we have too much zucchini. Don't let anything go to waste. Right. Now we've shown our mock apple pie in the past, made out of zucchini. Take a look at this, look at the shot. That's not apple pie. That's mock apple pie out of zucchini. Now this is a good time right here to tell you, if you have missed any shows in the past, go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com, check out our recipes, check out our canning, check out Old Time Hog, Gillen's Rabbit Butcher, and whatever we might have done. And we got a lot of great stuff coming up. We got a lot of good stuff coming out of the garden still. And our sheep should be here shortly. Yay. Let's go ahead and throw all these in. All right, I'm gonna move this aside a minute and cut up an onion. 
and it calls for an equal amount of onion, but I might go a little lighter on the onion. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to leave these in pieces for us, too, so when it pickles, if somebody likes to eat an onion. You can can, can't you? Can, you can can. You can, you know, can and you can do anything you want, really. Our ancestors canned their own stuff. They had root cellars where they had, you know, consistent temperature. That's one thing I'd like to do. Wouldn't you like to put a big root cellar inside of nice. them over here? Store I'm starting to cry. You have to onionize. We're going to go ahead and set this aside, make our hot mixture, and we, I'll have you read that off to me, and then we'll make your you strawberry. You pour that over that? Right. And then let, let it We're going to let it sit for an hour uh -huh. while we make your jam. How's gotcha. That? Sounds like a plan. All right. Now we have jiggle action on the top. Now is when we start our timer. All right, it's been 25 minutes. Let's turn this guy off. And now that will cool down little by little. All right, now you hear it slowing down. It's stopping to jiggle. Don't try to get that top off. Let it cool down in its own time. When it's done, that little pressure valve on the side will drop down. You'll know when it's done. Let it cool, let it be, it'll be fine. All right, back to the update. Jars, sterilized for the jam. Okay. Our cabbage and beans are cooling off, and you're making the zucchini pickle slice sauce. We are going to add two cups of cider vinegar. Gotcha. One cup of sugar, four to five tablespoons of salt. Okay. One and a half teaspoons of celery seed, and one quarter to one half teaspoon of ground turmeric. You can follow this little recipe and it's not just little changes here and there and you can uh, basically make just about anything pickle wise bread yeah. and butter type. So you're going to bring that to a boil and then pour it over and then let it set for an hour. We're going to set it aside. All right once you get this boiling you just add these together put a top on them let them stand for an hour. All right now Bobby Joe earlier this spring told me about his big green beans. He doesn't exaggerate. He grows big tomatoes, big green beans. I remember last time we were over there, they had the jar of pickled green beans. They were good. Oh, and crunchy. Bobby's going to pick them. Lois is going to make them. Let's go visit the Ellis's right now. We're back at the Secret Garden, Bobby Joe Ellis. Now, you talked earlier this year about your big green beans. Right. Now, I didn't doubt you, because everything you said has been true, but man, I couldn't imagine when you said big green beans, these are big green beans. They are. Tell folks again what, what brand they are. Fortex. Fortex. F-O-R-T-E-X, Fortex. Now, it's canning time. Everybody's canning. Right. And last year, you said, try some of these. And Lois makes a pickled green bean. Right. Which is delicious. So first of all, if you don't mind, Bobby Joe, pick us some of these monster green beans, and then we'll go inside and talk to Lois and see about getting a batch of these. Look at that. And the taste? Tastes real good. Tastes real good. Now that, I've seen some in here 12, 13 inches long. One thing about it, they're no, no problem to pick either. Well, they need to be about, what, five and a half inches to go in a quart jar? Yeah, five and a half inches the length for a quart jar. Vortex. Vortex, With right. some stout beans. Well, we'll go cut these up then. All right. All right, now we took a, a detour, a quick detour on the way in with the beans. I want to show you what kind of tomatoes Bobby Joe grows. <laughs> Big as my head. Look at that. That's a Bobby Joe tomato, and that's why we visit with Bobby Joe, because he, Bobby Joe knows gardening. Let me see your thumb. How green is it? It's pretty green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's go cut them beans up. Hey, what, what do I have to do to get a slice off one of those tomatoes? Go in the house and get this. Get in the house. house. <laughs> All right, yeah. Sounds good to me. <laughs> This is your outdoor gazebo office. That's right. That's this it. is where all the fun stuff happens. You, you've got this thing set up just for this, right? Yeah. You don't have to cut each one individually. Cut them all at once. So you know that you need a five and a half inch bean, which measures right here. Now, who eats all the pickled beans? Is it mostly you or some other people eating? The grandkids. The grandkids <laughs> like them? Yeah. <laughs> so what do you call this a lot fit? I just called a jig. A jig, a big yeah. jig. Matthew said, Dad, everything you do, you have to make a jig. <laughs> do it. There you go. Let's move this operation inside. Back in the kitchen of Lois Ellis, Bobby's done the outside stuff, as usual. He does a good job. I like this. You've got a thing going on here, That's just right. like last time. Mm -hmm. Now, you do something else that I really like. Last year we were sitting there, it may, have been, it may have been earlier this year, but I was over here and you, it was snack time and you handed out these uh, pickled green beans, which right. I've had before, but yours, I gotta say, are really good. 
Let's talk about that, how that process works. Obviously, he's just cut them, his mm -hmm. big 45 inch of beans. Yeah. He's cut them down into five inch groups. And how, where does it go from here? Okay, I'm gonna place them in the jars. I put them in as tight as I possibly can and keep them as straight as I can. Then I have a solution of vinegar, two cups of sugar, two sticks of cinnamon, one tablespoon of pickling spice, one and a half teaspoons of canning salt, three and a half cups of water. Boil that for 15 minutes and then let it simmer and pour that hot solution over them and then I power boil them in, in hot water for about 15 minutes. Just let them boil and give them a good hot bath. There you have your pickled beans. All right, now this is how they look after they've set a while. The, the color, you won't see as much color in it. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, a lot of people are going to ask the question, how long do you have to let it set? And you say as soon as they cool down, they're ready to go. Mm -hmm. And you can put them in the fridge, mm -hmm. let them stay nice mm -hmm. and crisp. Yeah, when you open them after you had your fill, put them in the fridge. Can we try one? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I can tell by looking at it. Now, see, you only cook it that long, they, don't, they retain some of the crunch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what it looks like. Oh man, listen to this. <laughs> Lois's pickle bait. Nom, 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 nom. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> Again, I was talking about the Fresh Tech, and this is, let's call this our gadget day. Okay. We tried this out. For the beginning canner, it's absolutely wonderful. You don't have to worry about jigglers. You don't have to worry about how to set your pressure. You push buttons, it has the recipe for you. Boom, boom, boom. Walk away. Walk away. Come back when it's done. Now, here's what we need. Jams and jellies are easy. They're absolutely easy. There's a lot of sugar. And the obvious question that some people have asked, can you substitute a, you know, a artificial right. sweetener? You can't because you have to have the bulk that's required and the sugar has to boil down accordingly for that thickness. Right. You have to use conventional sugar here. We have taken our strawberries and we're going to need about four cups. They're nice. Aren't they good looking strawberries? They are good. Nice and cleaned off already. We're going to cut the tops off and cut them in half. And again, we need about four cups for this particular recipe. This book that comes with it, make sure when you buy your canner, whatever type of canner it is, you keep your books because it has very important information about that particular canner. And with this particular outfit, that's a little bit more costly. This is gonna be above $200 for this outfit. But if you do small batches and you don't like the idea of the jiggler and all that complicated stuff, which is actually not that complicated, you can go this route and it does take a lot of the guesswork out for you. Now something you have to think about when you're making jams and jellies is pectin. Now pectin is a natural part of any fruit, but when you use it like we're using it and boil it in here, it's a thickening agent. It gives it that consistency that you want in your jellies and jams. Hey, wait a minute, I just thought of something. You know what this is? Tim Farmer's homemade jam. Oh, wait a minute, let's sing. I've heard that somewhere before. <laughs> sing okay, a song. Keep, keep going. Couple more? We're getting there, let's, let's load it up pretty good. Right. Now the next part is so easy, Oh, potato masher. Watch what we do with that. You good? Yeah. Now, here you go. Just like that. No food processor, nothing fancy smancy. Just keep working them. Now, somebody might ask, what's the difference between jam and jelly? Jelly is clear, and it's made from the juice of the fruit. Jams, which I prefer, has actual pieces in it. So like this is this. jam? This is jam. This is strawberry jam. All right, now we're gonna take our berries. We're gonna put them in the saucepan. Let's go ahead and bring that to a boil, constantly stirring. It smells good. Yeah, I know already. Now, as you stir that, once it gets to boiling, I'm gonna add in the pectin. We need four and a half tablespoons of that as it begins to boil. And again, pectin is a natural part of fruit. Now, we're also gonna add just a tiny bit of butter. Why butter? It just adds flavor and gives it that nice buttery finish. And we're going to boil that for just for a few minutes. Then we're going to come back with all of our sugar, stirring that in. No wonder it's so good. And we're going to stir this till it gets to a rolling boil. Then we're going to, once it gets there, we're going to let it go for about a minute. We'll release the pressure. I'm going to come around on your other all side. Right. And I'm going to go ahead and take these jars out. Now, we're going to take our little canning funnel, we're going to set inside of there, and we're just going to ladle this into each jar. You leave about a half inch head space in there. Put your 
top sawn. Hand tighten only. You don't have to get them super tight. As long as your jar is sealed properly, make sure you go around the edge of your jar, wipe it off, make sure there's no broken pieces of glass or anything like that. It's going to prevent sealing. Okay, now, just like that, take our jars, plop them around the area. Take the top, close it, press jams and jellies, then recipe one, and then start. This is done. We've let it set for a while till, it, till that little pressure gauge drop. Pop this open, grab our jars. All right, man, we got stuff going on. We got water boiling back here for your hot bath. Yes. We got the pressure cooker going over here. These smell and good. And this has been going for about a minute and a half. We got another minute and a half to go. Now, it's winter time, and you're craving a green tomato, sliced green tomato. It's not gonna happen unless you can them. And it's a very simple recipe. Let's right. go ahead and tell people what that is while this is still going. Sliced green tomatoes. Right. What else? Boiling water on top and some canning salt, about a teaspoon. Now, you can use canning salt and just a touch of alum. If you want to do that, that makes it crisper. Right. And I just to put a tiny bit of vinegar, just right. a drop of vinegar as a preservative. Now, I think that's ready. All right, that's ready. Let's turn that off. And I'm going to go ahead and And you're going to go right in the can. Those already smell, I'm telling you what, I could eat that Delicious. right I believe I could eat that right now. It does smell good, doesn't it? Absolutely. Most of our grandparents and great grandparents, this is what they did. This is how they preserved their food over the wintertime. And those are ready. Those are ready. 15 now minutes. Let's set these aside. They're going to be hot bathed for okay. 15 minutes. Now, we're hot bathing right now. So you're just putting your future fried green tomatoes. Let's do one more piece. In here. a jar. And we're just going to do one jar just to show you how it's done. There you go. You're going to take boiling water, tad of vinegar, just a tad, teaspoon of canning or pickling salt. So now remember, when you put that in here, when it cooks, it's going to boil and mix all up in there. Now, is that the easiest can in your life? That's the easiest life? thing in the world. Now, That's it. Yeah, look what she just did. Absolutely easy. Time remains. All right, sing a little song. Boom. Now, the great thing about this is you don't have to wait. Pop it right open. Now, do obviously stand back. Hear him popping already. already? Popping. <laughs> you have jam. We have jam. When you hear that little pop, that's the noise you want to hear when you're canning. It's letting you know that it's sealed, ready for storage. Our water is boiling. Our hot bath is ready. So these are still a little bit hot. I'm going to go ahead and pack these over here. That goes in the hot bath. This goes in the hot bath. In eight minutes, we take the tomatoes out. Then we let your pickles go for 15. Just boiling. That's the whole process. A little bit warm. Yes. Sweating just a little bit, but look in front of us what we've done in just a short amount of time. A lot of work. Let me see here. I'm so happy we can look. We can, can look at all can't that we? stuff. What's it all about? Good times. Good friends. And good eats. Right here in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. See you next week with a brand new show. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Kinco Farm Fence Supplies, Polecat Custom Smokers, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm, and Tim Farmer Productions. <laughs> Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by... L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Harvest Energy Solutions. Harvest cabins when you absolutely have to get away. House warmings, meeting all of your outdoor living and fireplace needs. Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. Rose Farm Supply. Family farming and commitment to our customers since 1982. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life. 
Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. Chrisman Mill Vineyards, Good Foods Co-op, Kentucky Beer Cheese, Weisenberger Mill,